Hello everyone and welcome to today's history slash science lesson. So the learning objective. As a historian and scientist, can I recount the experiments of Galileo Galilei? So we're going to start with a question time, okay? Imagine you're standing at the top of a tower. In one hand, you have a bowling ball. In the other hand, you have a feather. You drop both these objects simultaneously, okay? On the same height at the top of the tower. Which one hits the ground first? Have a think, okay? Pause the video and then come back and join me once you've, once you've had a chance to work it out, okay? So I'm guessing that most of you said that the bowling ball will hit the ground first, okay? And if we were to carry out this experiment on Earth, I would agree with you. But why do you think this happens? Do any of you think it happens because the bowling ball is heavier and has more mass than the feather? Now I'm gonna say that it doesn't happen because it has more mass than the feather, okay? I think that there's an alternative explanation for why this feather hits, uh, it takes longer to reach the ground than the bowling ball, okay? Despite being much lighter and having less mass. Now you might think Mr. Messenger's gone a little bit crazy, but bear with me, okay? And we're gonna go through what I think is going on here. Now, we're gonna do an experiment, first of all, to see what happens if we, we can test this hypothesis to see what happens if we drop two objects with the same mass from the same height, okay? Because remember, if you said a minute ago that you thought the bowling ball hits the ground first because it's heavier, well then in this scenario, both objects that weigh the same, have the same, or have the same mass, are gonna hit the ground at the same time, aren't they? You're gonna drop them and they're gonna hit the ground at the same time. And we can do an experiment to test this out, okay? And you can get involved too, potentially. So. Here is, here is the experiment. You're gonna need two pieces of paper, okay? One of them, they need to be the same size. They need to be A4. One of them, you're gonna scrunch up, okay? And one of them, you're gonna leave in its normal form. Now, please, just a quick warning, please don't scrunch up good paper that you can use for printing, writing, whatever, okay? Only scrunch up paper if it's scrap paper that was already heading to the recycling bin, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold out your arms and you're gonna need to stop, you're gonna need to stop watching a timer for this, okay? You're gonna hold out your arms and you're going to drop them and you're going to count or time how long it takes for them both both pieces of paper to hit the floor okay i'm interested to see what you come up with so have a go do that experiment now pause the video and then come back and join me okay and we can talk through what happened so welcome back everyone i'm guessing that for you the ball that was scrunched up okay the piece of paper scrunched up fell to the ground much faster than the flat piece of paper okay now, the reason why I think this happens, despite the fact they have the same mass, is because of air resistance, okay? Now, the Earth has an atmosphere, and the gases that make up the Earth's atmosphere push up against objects as they fall, okay? And you can think of this air resistance as the friction between the object, between the air and a moving object, okay? So, if we look at our two pieces of paper, I've drawn a couple of arrows to represent the size of air resistance, the flat piece of paper ends up attracting and sort of fighting against a lot more air resistance than the, the scrunched up one, okay? Because it's flatter, it means that there's more opportunity for air resistance to slow down that piece of paper. And I'm arguing that's why it fell to the ground slower, it took longer than the scrunched up piece of paper, okay? That's what I'm saying. And remember, these, these objects have the same mass. So in theory, if your theory, if your idea at the start about the bowling ball being heavier is why it falls faster, then in theory, they should have fallen at the same speed. Now, what I'm saying is, I think actually it's the air resistance, okay? So I've got, I've got my, yeah, more air resistance here, less air resistance there. Don't just take my word for it, okay? We're gonna <laughs> have people who know a lot more about this stuff than me explain it to you, okay? So I've argued that the reason the bowling ball appears to fall faster than the feather is due to differences in air resistance, not because the bowling ball is heavier or has more mass, okay? So what happens if we remove the air? What happens if you take away that air resistance? What's gonna to happen to those two objects, okay? And luckily, there is a, a brilliant video here by Professor Brian Kopp, okay? He carried out an extraordinary experiment. It's absolutely fantastic, okay? And he does the bowling ball and the feather experiment, but I want you to go and watch that video now, okay? Because that is, it is absolutely fantastic. So you can pause this video here, and find the link within Teams and you'll see the video 
and watch the video. It is astonishing. Okay, they use the most incredible slow mo cameras, and it's brilliant. Okay, so go watch that now. Okay, and then come back. So welcome back, and hopefully you noticed that initially they the the bowling ball as as you probably predicted at the start did fall faster under normal earth conditions, didn't it? It did hit the ground faster under normal earth conditions, okay? However, when they turned on that enormous vacuum that they have, okay, an incredible sort of piece of engineering and machinery, okay, they had that vacuum. It was incredible. It was so nice to watch them fall, wasn't it? Okay, and you saw them in slow-mo just hit the ground. And you just, you just think, like, how is that possible with that feather, okay? Now, don't worry too much about the explanation at the end about where he spoke about Einstein was suggesting that actually they're not actually falling and there's no force on them, okay? That's <laughs> a little bit beyond the scope of what, what we're doing, okay, in our, in our science lessons and what we do. But the main thing to take away from that is when you remove air resistance, they're hitting the ground at the same time, aren't they? Which is just astonishing, really, absolutely astonishing. Now, we've spoken about, uh, we've watched that video where they, they did it in normal earth conditions and then they did it in a vacuum. But our next thing to think about is, what happens in space? Okay, what happens if we were to do this in space? So space is almost a perfect vacuum, okay? So we can forget about air resistance up in space, all right? We can, it's, it's, it's not really a factor anymore, okay? And David Scott, an American astronaut, carried out a famous experiment whilst on the moon in 1971, okay? So not quite as dramatic as Brian Cox's one, but he was on the moon, so in some senses it was more dramatic, okay? But it's a bit more low budget video okay and what i've done is i've linked that video to, for you as well to go watch essentially what he does is he has a hammer and he has a feather and on the surface of the moon he records himself dropping these objects at the same time okay and you notice that both because there's no atmosphere there's not really any atmosphere on the moon and because you know he's in space they both fall together at the same time as well now the important thing about his his um uh, for our lesson today, important thing about his video for lesson today is that in, in that he references a man named Galileo. I don't know if you heard that. He says this these days, so this, this sort of backs up what Galileo was saying, okay? Now, like I say, during the clip, he references the name of the famous astronomer Galileo. Now, Galileo was born in 1564 and died in 1642. So we're talking 300 years later, someone finally went to the moon and tested out and showed that Galileo's initial thoughts all those years ago, 300 years after he died, okay, was correct. Extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. And your task for today is to find out a little bit more about Galileo Galilei, okay? So, your bronze, silver, gold. Oh, so before I before you do the bronze, silver, gold, it does say about his famous experiment, okay? Now, a little word of, word of warning about Galileo's famous experiment. A lot of people, the general consensus is that he didn't actually do what is kind of claimed that he did. Is sort of the popular opinion is kind of that actually it was probably more of a thought experiment. But for our purposes, you can just tell me what he did, okay? And I've, I will link a video in Teams that has a, a BBC kid-friendly explanation of Galileo's experiment. So you can watch that. What I'd like you to do is that, yeah, don't say, so don't, if you read anything online that says, Galileo might not have done this. Please don't worry, okay? You can tell it to me like he did. I don't mind, all right? The more important thing is that we're learning about science. So, bronze. I can produce a short biography of Galileo and provide a simple recount of his famous experiment, okay? So you're going to give me a tiny bit of information about Galileo, who he was, where he came from, you know, what country he was in, um, what did he do, what was he famous for, okay? But don't, not, not very much. It only has to be a little bit. And then give me a little recount of his famous experiment, okay? That's bronze. Silver, you're going to do the same thing as above. You're going to try and explain scientifically why you would get a different result on Earth compared to the moon or space in general. OK, so you're going to be thinking about that difference in air resistance. You can be using words like vacuum. OK, you can give me a little bit of science to explain why that happened. All right. And gold, you're going to need to do a bit more historical research and discovery for gold. OK, so as above, and I explain the historical significance of Galileo's discoveries, referencing the previously accepted work of Aristotle. Now, in the video of Galileo's experiment that I've linked, there is a, there is a mention of Aristotle, okay? Now, they, they talk about Aristotle and they say that basically his ideas were accepted for a very long time, and then Galileo came along and decided, I think he's wrong, okay? Now, I'm not gonna tell you all about that yet because gold, I want you to find that out yourself, okay? I want you to do a little bit of research 
and you can tell me about sort of what why Galileo went against um, went against Aristotle and essentially changed um, the history of science forever. Okay, he's an incredibly famous uh, scientist, Galileo, a real you know legend in the field of science, if you like. Okay, so there are your tasks. Please give it a go. I hope you enjoy it, and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.